So I guess the larger question yeah. for some, though, is whether other cities follow suit. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's a troublesome thing because, you know, Uber has been struggling uh, for a long time in these cities. And actually, the first thing that Dara Khosr Shahi, the new CEO who came in after Travis Kalanick did, was go to London to sort of assuage the critics there. If you remember, when, it was one of his first international trips, and it was very soon into his uh, becoming CEO. Um, so it's really problematic if they don't get these cities straight, especially London, which I think is its biggest uh, revenue generator after the United States. And it, the thing is, it comes after a couple of really big stumbles, including Dara's unfortunate interview uh, that he did with Axios, where he seemed to not defend the, the Saudis, but wasn't certainly wasn't uh, uh, didn't he misspoke? I guess I don't know what else to say. And then obviously there's issues around the economics of the company. There's uh, the stock sales and things like that. So it's not a great time for him as a CEO. Kara, trying to fit this inside a larger tech narrative, it, it seems like there are some platforms that had a maybe, if not growth at all costs, growth, growth, growth strategy, and now yeah. they're having to go back and add costs to figure out how to either comply with regulations or just operate the platform in a reasonable way going forward. Where do you think this ends up with Uber? Does it help make their business model more viable, uh, shake competitors out, or is it just a continuing yeah. headache for them? Well, this is a theme that I've been talking about a lot. Like, it's very good, easy to have great uh, results when you don't pay all the costs. You know, I've talked about this with Facebook and content moderation. And with Uber and Lyft and all the others, not just Uber, these prices are so low and it's great for consumers, but it's at the expense of actual economic viability. And so when you're looking at an Uber ride that is so inexpensive, like, how can they do this? Well, how they can do this is it, 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 they lose money on it. And so the question is, once you figure in the cost of doing proper regulation, proper checking, possibly paying employee benefits, that's another thing, the, the AB5 in California, these things tend to add up and these businesses look a little less uh, growth, you know, as good, I guess. And this, the growth at all costs idea is in order to get market share. But once you do, you have to have a business that justifies itself. And I think you see this all over the Internet space of, of companies trying to justify themselves, especially as there's a trend towards more um, public markets really want them to pay more attention to the bottom line. Kara, in, in London, according to the TFL, these unauthorized mm -hmm. drivers and the way they were able to upload their photos and basically pose as other drivers, that... 14,000 trips in London alone. Yeah. I mean, it, it begs the question about whether this is a practice that has happened in other cities as well. But mm -hmm. I guess really just basic, basic question um, to you on this. How could the company go this long without realizing that this was happening? Well, that's, like, that's an issue with a lot of these companies. I mean, they obviously didn't have systems in place that ensure these things don't get gained, essentially. You know, uh, Airbnb had this problem of party houses. Like, oh, we didn't realize party houses. But they, I kind of knew about party houses. A lot of people did. And it's putting systems in place to deal with the problems that are going to come that are inherent in any, any business you have that has an analog base. And so safety of consumers, which is something that DAR has pushed heavily and made lots of improvements, by the way, um, is something that's critically important. And the vetting of drivers to make, make sure the drivers are insured, make sure they don't have criminal records, is a critical part of this business in order to keep it going properly, besides all the other issues, which including price and, um, and competition and everything else. Hey, Kara, really quick, um, as they begin to test out audio and video recording of rides, do you think, uh, what's it going to do to the privacy versus security debate? Another big issue. I mean, this is the thing. These companies are sort of growing uh, up and to the right. They all run into the reality of running a business, whatever business it happens to be. And obviously, I was thinking about it. Do you want your things recorded? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, who has rights to those recordings? What if someone records you without your permission? It's very confusing, I think. I, I didn't quite understand how it's going to be deployed. Um, you know, it's, it's a move towards the idea that, that we make it safer and safer. And, and we're not going to avoid uh, being, uh, ha being on camera in the future more and more. But it's still, you know, it's, a, it's another move. But what I would like is them to vet the drivers and they have insurance. That, to me, is table stakes.